In this video, we're going to look at another example of using the indefinite integral to find the antiderivative of a given function. So when we talk about using the indefinite integral, what the, the function that we're finding the antiderivative of is this integrand, or the thing that's inside of the integral. So what we're trying to do is trying to figure out if this is considered our derivative, what was the original function that we used to give us this as our derivative. As I look at this type of function here, I see that this vaguely looks like the form of the derivative of tangent inverse of x, okay? And the reason why I say it vaguely looks like that is because in order to have tangent inverse of x, this x, this argument of tangent inverse, this thing needs to be squared, right? And we almost have that, but we also have this 64 times x squared, so it's not by itself. But I ask, is there a way that we can get this thing here, this one plus this whatever this is, to be squared so that we can almost plug it in to tangent inverse and have it be the argument of tangent inverse such that taking the derivative of that thing that we think that it is to give us this. And so what I'm looking at is, do we know of a number that if we square it gives us 64? Well, 8 squared gives us 64. So what we can write this integral as, what we can rewrite it as, is 1 over 1 plus 8 squared times x squared dx, right? And so we know by using properties of exponents, we can combine this 8 and x inside of the same parentheses and then raise that, whole pro or raise that product to the power of 2. So let's go ahead and do just that. So we have the integral of 1 over 1 plus 8x squared. And so if we have this, if we were to, re to like unpack this and do 8x times 8x, we would get back a 64x squared. So all this work we've done so far is fine and dandy. All we did was we kind of rewrote this integral in ways that more kind of fits this form here to say that, okay, the antiderivative of something that looks like this is tangent inverse of this thing that's being squared. But if we were to say that, is this like the general antiderivative of this? Is the antiderivative of this, is the indefinite integral of this just tangent inverse of 8x plus c? Well, if we evaluate it to be such a thing, let's go ahead and check it. And so the reason we came up with this antiderivative in the way that we did is because we know that if we have 1 over 1 plus something squared, the antiderivative of this, by taking the integral of it, the antiderivative is something that should look like this. And then we also added in that arbitrary plus c, right, to take care of that arbitrary constant of integration. So what we're going to do now is we're going to check is does this function, when derived, give us this? So let's see. Well, we know that tangent inverse of 8x requires us to use the chain rule, right? So if something that looks like this, so let's come over here and do our chain rule work. So the outermost function is tangent inverse. So we have this. The innermost function is 8x, right? So the derivative of this is 8. And the derivative of tangent inverse, we said, was 1 over 1 plus the argument squared. So 1 over 1 plus argument squared. So now 8x goes in for the argument, and we multiply this function by 8. So what we're going to have is 8 times 1 over 1 plus 8x squared. So then what this gives us is 8 over 1 plus 64x squared. And it doesn't quite match with what we have to start off with. It doesn't really start with, it doesn't match with our integrand that we started the question off with, right? So then we ask ourselves if we're going to go back to, because we know that this form and this form are equivalent, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look primarily at this form that we had after using the chain rule to see if there's a constant multiple that we can bring into the mix that takes care of the fact that we have an 8 being multiplied to the original integrand that's prohibiting us from saying, yeah, this is our antiderivative of this. Well, in order to get this 8 to kind of go away, in a sense, because the original function that we're dealing with doesn't have anything multiplied to the numerator, right? It just has 1. So what takes care of a constant multiple of 8, but multiplying it by 1 over 8, right? If we do that, this divided by 8 and this multiplied by 8, they divide away, 
So all we're left with is this thing, which would evaluate to give us the original function, right? So we almost had what we thought to be our antiderivative of this. We just need to incorporate this constant multiple of one over eight into the mix. And how we're gonna do that is simply add it right in front of tangent inverse, okay? And so I claim that this is our answer. Let's go ahead and check it with some differentiation work. And so we know that we're still gonna need to use the chain rule again, which we just did over here. And so once we do that, we're gonna have tangent inverse drives to give us this, adx gives us that, plugging stuff in. It still follows the same concept, but this multiplied by eight is what we take care of there. So then what we're gonna get is if we derive that, we're gonna have this constant multiple of one over eight is gonna be multiplied to eight times one over one plus eight X squared, right? And so we said by nature of the multiplication, if we're gonna have this, we're gonna have one over eight times eight over one plus eight X squared, right? So what happens is this, when we do eight and then divided by eight, they divide away. So we're gonna be left with is one plus eight X squared or one over one plus 64 X squared. And this is what we had to start off with, right? So, cause this matches with this, this is gonna be the antiderivative that we have for our given function. So again, in this case, what we needed to look at is we kind of quickly figured out what the, what the form our general antiderivative should look like. It should look like a tangent inverse function cause we knew about the derivative of tangent inverse takes this form. So we just needed to go backwards and say the antiderivative of something that looks like this takes the form of tangent inverse. And so we were almost there like right off the bat, but what we needed to think about is does this antiderivative that we just started off with barring off this one over eight, does it actually take the form of what we had? And the answer was no. We found that this took the form of before adding in this one over eight, it looked almost like eight over one plus 64 X squared. So it didn't quite match with what we had originally for our function. So we couldn't really say that this alone was the antiderivative. We needed to incorporate this constant multiple into the mix to take care of the fact that we multiplied the original function we were integrating to find the antiderivative of by eight. And so that's why we brought in that one over eight. And that's where this whole issue kind of came in of figuring out what constant multiple needed to be brought into the mix.